Boring alert, boring alert. If you have attention deficit disorder, get bored very easily or do not have a passion for antiques, hit the back button. I urge you to do so. So nonetheless, i um, about to show you an eBay unboxing of a beautiful, beautiful antique early American brilliant cut glass box. And before I do so, since I'm not an expert on antique glass at all or American brilliant cut glass, I thought I'd give you a little explanation because you might be wondering what the heck is this lady showing me? So I found an article about the history of it. And so what it basically says is the 1876 Centennial Exposition in Philadelphia marked the beginning of a new era in American early brilliant cut glass. So basically before that, nobody had ever seen glass made so beautifully before. America did not have the market in this and the Europeans did. Now around this time, the Americans um, had seen a lot of immigration from Europe coming into the States. And with that, they brought their craftsmanship of beautiful, beautiful decorative arts. And so that's when the American glass companies started to make something that was so special that nobody had ever seen before around the globe. So this article explains most of it. And so prior to that, mostly the uh, most beautiful glass that was revered cut glass were in Europe. And uh, this is a tradition. Glass making is a tradition that goes back further than 3000 years. And the French have it down pat, all the Europeans have it down pat. And until we seen, we had seen the immigration of all the Europeans coming here, we did not have that. We did not have that gift of craftsmanship and um, like that talent of cutting the glass into the beautiful shapes that were made around this time. And this um, had gone on till about, probably about 1910, this uh, particular um decorative arts movement with the cut glass. After that, it wasn't as uh, interesting to people anymore. People weren't willing to pay as much because this was very expensive glass since it was all handmade, hand cut and hand carved. And then after that, not too long later, we, see, we saw the depression and that was the total end to this beautiful glass um, creations that were being made by the American and European makers. So Here's an example. Let's go like show you this particular vase was made by T.B. Clark and Company. Here's an early example. Very, very beautiful cut glass. And I mean, it was just amazing. Like um, nobody had ever seen anything quite like this before. It was uh, awe inspiring. The patterns um, were on a variety of different kinds of wares. It was uh, punch bowls. It was vases. It was plates. It was you name it, it was made in that pattern. And there was thousands upon thousands of different shapes and designs and thousands of different glass makers making such pieces of glass at the time. It was insurmountable, the amounts of different pieces that were seen. Now, only the wealthy and affluent could basically afford this type of glass. It was very expensive since it was all hand done. And so it's saying that Everything imaginable was made in this type of glass, including goblets, dishes, punch bowls, eperniers. It was. Um, it says that it had grown to such an extent, this uh, type of industry, um, that in 1890, over a thousand glass companies were in the business of creating these treasured works, such as Libby Glass, J. Horan Company, Dorflinger and & Sons, and T.G. Hawks Company. And here's another example of a close-up of one of the patterns. And a lot of people that collect this type of glass um, pretty much look to try to collect every single piece of a certain pattern to complete their collection. It's not easy to complete an entire collection of a certain pattern. And so I was so glad to have had the little box that I had won on eBay. And here comes my dog to interrupt my video. So you know what? Stay tuned one second. If you hear the bell, ignore it. It's my little guy. And uh, I'll show you this box, um, all angles, I'll open it up, I'll show you the beauty of this glass because I've never seen anything like it before. Hang on one second while I get it. So a bunch of you have expressed how much you really enjoy these eBay unboxings and I like them too. Like I like watching YouTubers take things out of boxes and show you like basically what they got. I don't know why, it's fun. It's like I went shopping with them. So yeah, I'm gonna have to, um, 
put the camera down a second and cut this with the knife because I can't do this uh, while I'm filming. So stay tuned one second while I get this out. So why is this crazy lady wearing a Smurf blue glove, you may be asking? It's because I do not want to get my fingerprints on this. I just polished it. So here's my example of hand-cut early American brilliant glass. And it appears to be some kind of powder box. And I don't know. If you know, write it in the comments below. Also, I do not know who made this pattern. It appears to be like a hand or wheel cut daisy pattern with leaves. And it has very intricate geometric patterns going around the box. And my dog is driving me crazy right now. He's running through the kitchen with his little bell collar on right now. So ignore that sound if you hear it. And so... Again, I don't know who made this, don't know exactly precisely how old it is, but I do know one thing. It's very beautiful and very heavy, weighing in at almost three pounds, and it was silver plated at one time. Unfortunately, the silver has worn off, and what you see underneath it is the metal base. So this was once spectacular, a spectacular piece of glass, and as you can see as I move it about, it sparkles in the light. So let me place it down for one moment as I show you what it looks like when you open it up. But one other thing I wanted to show you was a lot of times you'll see these glass boxes with the pattern on the top and on the bottom, you'll just see like a starred, like it looks like a bunch of lines cut into the bottom. This particular one actually has the same pattern that you see here on the top with the daisy on the bottom as well. And you generally don't see that. Again, I'm not an expert, but I have been looking up these boxes and I don't see too many times the pattern that's on the top on the bottom as well. So this may be a more expensive piece of American Brilliant cut glass. Um, if you have cut glass that you think is antique and you may think is old and you just want to know if it's Brilliant cut glass, a lot of ways to tell if glass is cheaply made and mass produced is by lines. You'll see like mold lines in it. So look very closely along the piece of glass that you have. And look for lines going in it somewhere. You'll see like lines and that'll tell you that it's like pressed and mass produced. This does not have any of those lines anywhere. And it's making funny sounds right now. But here's a close up of the pattern. So you can see it. Now it has a little scratches on it from age, but that's to be expected. I do not know what these patterns are called. If you know what these type of cuts are called, please tell me in the comments below. Again, if you recognize this pattern, please tell me in the comments below. Let me open it up really fast and show it to you. So as you can see, it's really quite stunning. The silver plate has um, virtually been untouched on the inside because it has not been exposed to the elements. I cannot find a maker's mark anywhere. Sometimes on these older pieces, you can find it impressed somewhere on the metal part of it and I mean I do see something very faintly here I'm trying to zoom in on it to show you my god it's so hard to focus with these cameras cell phones sometimes aren't that wonderful but um I mean I did think I see you know saw something impressed see I don't know if you see that right there but I can't make it out I cannot make it out for the life of me if you recognize what that might be please tell me Again, in the comments below, I do see some gouges over here. I don't know if that was part of an emblem or mark. So here we go. So I thought I'd share this with you. I'm so glad I got to show it to you. Um, it really is a quite a fascinating piece. Again, it's really heavy and it's really quite beautiful. I mean, these pieces um, are getting scarcer and scarcer. Over the years, klutzes like me come along and drop things like this. And that's why, like, a lot of them are becoming scarce. A lot of people, um, when someone passes away and they have this in their collection, their family throws it in the garbage, thinking it's just cheap pressed glass. And so if you like this piece or like uh, the video, please um, actually write something in the comments below. Tell me a little bit more about it if you are an expert. If you like this, give me a thumbs up and a subscribe if possible. Thanks so much for watching.